unlock our heavens. But I'm going to talk about using faith to unlock our heavens. The Bible talks about the keys of the kingdom, and we need keys to operate. You know, recently I looked at the bunch of keys that I carry around, and I was wondering whether it was me carrying the bunch or my bunch carrying me. There were so many that I wondered what many of the keys were meant for. So I sat down one day and said, I'm going to deal with this matter. We live our lives, you know, we cannot do without keys. We have keys to our cars, we have keys to our doors, we have keys to everything. We have keys to everything, even our uh, soft, soft, um, soft um, assets, um, our Yahoo, you know, addresses and our Facebook addresses. We have keys called passwords to unlock them. And so why shouldn't we, you know, find out the keys to unlock the heavens? And one of the keys to unlocking the heavens is faith. And I'm going to be talking about faith. And the kind of faith that I talk about as a preacher is the faith that has to do with knowledge. Faith, there's faith that works with love. There is faith that works with knowledge. And that's the type that I emphasize, faith that works with knowledge. Faith that works with knowledge. So there are various keys. And in this end times, we, we, we are going to need to learn more about the keys of the kingdom because we'll need it to open a lot of doors and to get by. You see, when you don't open doors, you don't get by. You know, Apostle Peter, you know, Jesus said to him, I am going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Right? Right. Can, can, can I have a witness? God, Jesus gave Peter the keys of the kingdom, and Peter operated them so much. One day I asked God, I said, how come you gave Peter the keys of the kingdom? How did he use them? And the Lord opened my eyes into the scripture to see that until Peter preached the first message, the disciples didn't have the boldness to begin to operate. So he opened the door for them. He applied the key. One of the keys of the kingdom, he opened the door. And until Apostle Peter opened the door to the Gentiles, Apostle Paul couldn't enter. So he applied the keys when God told him, rise up, kill, and eat. Talking about Cornelius. He opened the door and, you know, Apostle Peter was able to operate. You know, when Apostle Peter... Yeah, sorry, Apostle Paul was now able to operate. When Apostle Peter came on the scene and he began to move among the Gentiles, people thought, you know, this was going to be his area of ministry. No, he had to take a back step because all he needed to do, all he was asked to do was just open the door. And so the moment he opened the door, Apostle Paul was able to operate very well. He opened so many doors that time would not permit us to talk about. So I will, I will not dwell on that because we are dealing with unlocking the heavens. And talking about keys, the key, one of the keys to unlocking the heavens is our faith. You can use your giving to unlock the heavens. You can use your prayers to unlock the heavens. You can use a, a whole number of things to unlock the heavens. I'll show you in Second Peter 1. Verse 1 to 4, 2 Peter 1, 1 to 4 says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. I thought we appropriated grace and peace for free. Yes, we did. But if we are going to grow in grace and peace, we have to have knowledge. We have to know the things that are us. Now, it goes further to say, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. Knowledge is key. To operate in faith. You can't operate faith in isolation. You can't operate faith in a vacuum. We have to have knowledge. And the knowledge has to be about the word of God. We have to have the knowledge about the word of God. And the knowledge we will need about the word of God is knowledge about the challenges we want to deal with. We have to have knowledge about what the word of God says, about the obstacles, the challenges, the things we have to deal with. And of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life 
and godliness. So this scripture is telling us that all things have been given unto us that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I break, can I break a news to you now? Most of the things that are given to us are in heaven. So we have to be able to reach out to heaven to get them to earth. We have to be able to reach out into the spirit to materialize the things that have been given to us. In Ephesians 2, chapter 2, from verse 2 to 6, it says, Wherein, Ephesians 2, 2 to 6, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and mind, and whereby, and whereby nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Awesome scripture. I, I have read this thing all my life, these scriptures all my life. And every time I read it, I'm so excited to know, and you know, to know that I am seated in the heavenlies. I am seated in the heavenlies. That's taking it to the extreme. I'm seated in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. Awesome. So, I am not going to try to unlock the heavens. I am actually in the heavens. Amen. But you see, all of us are not there. Praise the Lord. We are walking day by day. I'm not going to pretend that we all are there. We are going to walk day by day. In the meantime, we must be able to unlock the heavens. Amen. In order for us to, you know. So, but that's where we really are. I, I, I try to operate faith by knowledge. I see what, I look at what the Lord is saying in his word. And I, I, I try to live by it. I try to walk by it. I haven't fully attained everything. And that's how we all ought to be. So I have come to declare unto you uh, today that your heavens are already opened. Amen. Oh, you're not excited. I said, amen. Your heavens are already opened. Amen. Your heavens are already opened. After today's meeting, you are going to step out, step up, and begin to reign. Amen. Step out, step up, and stay on top and begin to reign. Now, please, I, I need you to help me, encourage me to preach this morning. So, I like to have your response. But let's do a faith talk. A faith talk this morning. Can we do a faith talk? Are you ready? Faith talk. Say with me, I am unstoppable. Oh, please, church. Say with me, I am unstoppable. I am on earth to represent Jesus. Satan is looking for where to hide because I am coming. God's anointing upon my life is immeasurable. I am a threat to every disease, plague, or infection. I cannot be intimidated. I refuse to be poor. I am the chosen of the Lord. The heavens are opened unto me. The lines have followed upon, unto me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I am like a tree planted by the riverside. I have overcome the world. I have overcome my sinful nature. I'm on top right now. I refuse to be affected by the God of my village. My heaven is open. Let my heavens be unlocked. Let my earth be unlocked. Let my business be unlocked. I unlock my business. I unlock my destiny. I unlock my star. I unlock favor over me. I unlock my prayer life. I unlock my faith. I unlock my spirit. I unlock my soul. I unlock my body. I unlock my mind. Begin to conceive great ideas. Mind my mind. Begin to conceive great ideas. I unlock my heavens. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am a heaven mover. I am a mystery. I am an earth mover. I am not an ordinary person. Let my ministry angels come here right now. Let them remove 
every spiritual roadblock from my path. Let them excavate every physical roadblock from my path. I refuse to be defeated. I am the glory of God. I refuse to be stagnated. I cannot be neglected. I am not an ordinary person. I am God's superman here on earth. I have no reasons to regret. I am a problem to the devil. I am a problem to his kingdom. I am a problem to witches and wizards. I am higher than principalities and powers. They are under my feet. I represent Jesus here on earth. I refuse to be discouraged. I collect every spiritual blessings given to me by God. I take every spiritual blessings that has my name written on them. Let my style be given to me. I take back my glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I call this faith talk. A lot of times we talk negatives. We talk things that put us down. We talk things that kill our spirits. We need to, we ought to begin to talk faith talk. Amen. It is what we have been saying over the years that kept us where we are now. We need to move to the next level by what we are saying. The Bible says the power of life and death light in the tongue. The Bible says by words of mouth we make war. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. What happened when we got born again? Did you remember that when we got born again, you know, it seemed as if a sheet was rolled off the heavens. And it seemed as if the whole heavens was before us. The, the, the sky was not enough to contain us. We felt so, so free. We felt so, so connected to God. What happened along the way? What went wrong? You know, we were told erroneously that because we got born again, God didn't want us to be discouraged to go back. So he made everything easy for us. So we will pray a little, we will have results when we got born again. I don't know how many of you remember that. We were told, I don't know if you were told, that God didn't want us to step back. He wanted us to be encouraged. So he answered us so easily. No, that's wrong. What actually happened was that that is supposed to be our beginning point. That was supposed to be our beginning point. We were supposed to grow in, grow in that in that kind of atmosphere and continue to grow. You know, there were times, you know, I walked after I gave my life to Christ. I wondered whether I was stepping on the floor. I was floating. I was literally floating. I was wondering. I, I was scared. You know, that's the kind of oppression that God, that's the kind of level God wants us to be. And that was actually our beginning point. You know, but when we allowed some, some, you know, some things to to infiltrate our system, our minds, you know, we began to ebb, we began to come low, we began to drop from that level, which actually should have been our starting point. And then we were supposed to build up on it, but we thought it was for a season just for God to encourage us. It was error. Hallelujah. We were supposed to start from there and to grow from there. Amen. So that every disease will bow to us. We will reach out to heaven, the heavens easily, bring things out from the heavens into manifestation. That's what was supposed to happen. But we allow the things that are around us to influence us. They poisoned us. We took on too much, too much toxins. And we don't talk faith talk any longer. We talk, we want to, we, we, we get you know, we, get, we can get sick sometimes. We talk, we can get broke sometimes. And that became our experience because we got it wrong all this way. But we are going back there. Hallelujah. I said we are going back there. We are going back there. Say I am going back there. No, I'm saying you should say I, Pastor Tony, is going back there. Say you are going back there. Point at me, say you are going back there. Amen. Amen. So that was supposed to be where we dwell. Let's look at Romans 8, 9. Romans 8, 9. In Romans 8, 9, I'll read from the NIV. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, they do not belong to Christ. Okay. It says, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh. You seated here this morning are not in your house. You are not in your house. Where are you? You are in church. Therefore, right now, what is your address? Your address is in church. 
our address is in the spirit. Our address is in the spirit realm. You know, I haven't left this verse two, three months ago when God opened it up to me. So my address is in the spirit realm. I'm supposed to operate from the spirit. You know, Paul, Apostle Paul says, haven't begun in the spirit. Have you now ended up in the flesh? So they changed address. We are not supposed to change address. We are supposed to remain in the spirit. That's where we are. Say, I'm in the spirit. Our flesh is in the manifestation. It says, I like NIV. It says, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh. Hi. You are not in the realm of the flesh. Our realm is not in the flesh. Our realm is in the spirit. That's, 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 these are the knowledge we need to unlock the heaven. When we have the knowledge about who we are, where we are supposed to be, what we are in Christ, the heaven we answer to us. Amen. If you know that you are not supposed to be sleeping on a mat in the 21st century, even if you are the poorest of the poor, you will not sleep on the mat. You will look for a mattress at least, even if it is Tokumbo, to sleep on. You see, because you have come to knowledge that, you see, your body is not meant for the mat. It's, to, it's about knowledge. Faith works easier when there is knowledge. Faith is easier when you know that these things are yours. It works a lot easier, you know, when you know. Okay. <sighs> Praise the Lord. In Matthew 18, 18, you find something wonderful there. In Matthew 18, 18, it says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever shall, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatsoever. You can lose your prayer life in the heavenlies. You see, it is in the heavenlies that your prayer life is, 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 you know, is trapped. It's in the heavenlies that your prayer life is weakened before it affects you in the physical. If your prayer life is weakened at that level, so we, whatsoever we shall bind in the heavenlies shall be bound on earth. That's how we began to bind demons. That's what gave us authority. I bind you. That's where it came from. Nowhere else in the scripture. That's where it came from. I bind you. If you, we have bound so much, we need to begin to lose certain things down. We bind more of the time, but we need to also lose. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I tell my people, every time I preach, I tell them, cars are not sold in the garages. Cars come from heaven. Lands come from heaven. Babies come from heaven. Every good thing comes from the father of where? Help me now. The father of lights. Every good thing comes from the father of what? Of lights. Cars, everything. Every good thing comes from heaven. Amen. So we have bound for too long. Forgetting that we ought to also lose certain things. It is, a, it is calamity for a child of God to go into a place of worship and doesn't feel God. And walks away and say, well, we have done it. You haven't done anything. It's calamity. You don't feel that you, you didn't connect. You just walk away. Why must you sing 20 songs before you enter? Must you open several doors to enter your house? Must you open several doors to enter your car? You sing 20 songs so that by the time you are singing in 19th, you would have neared the spirit. And then, when you don't enter, you walk away. And it doesn't bother you. That's where we live, in the spirit. That's our address. And when we must begin to operate. And that's what opens the heaven. You see, if you try to, you know, to take shower from your kitchen, you will never feel water. If you try to take shower from your kitchen, you will never feel water. So many of us are trying to take showers from our kitchen. When we are supposed to be in the spirit for the heavens to open. Because it is in the spirit that heavens open. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we need knowledge. I'm trying to give us knowledge. And then to tell you to operate. You see, we are supposed to be operators. Distributors of God's gifts. Of God's blessings. We are operators and distributors of God's blessings. It says, uh, 
everything I see of my father, I do. When he was going, he said, I hand over to you. That's what he did. It's not pride. It is knowledge. Sometimes, you see, knowledge, the Bible says knowledge puffs up. Right? But sometimes you can't, you can't draw a line. Sometimes it's difficult to draw a line. When you know, man, you know. You see, you, you, it's like telling yourself, I can't hawk on the streets of Lagos. It's not pride. Is that pride? I can, I can never hawk on the streets. And they say, ah, you're not humble. You're not a humble brother. You can't hawk. Even with your degree, Jesus could have hawked a lie. That's, that's, that's not right. Amen. So we have to know so that faith will be easy to operate. You see, if you haven't found it in the world, it's more difficult to operate. So to unlock our heavens, we have to have faith. And faith is one way we can unlock our heavens. Okay. Jesus told a number of people, he said, your faith has made you whole. Your faith made you whole. Healing came from above. It came from the Father of life. You know, I, I think it was this guy that, you know, that this young man that we read, I saw heaven. Many of us read those book, that book as we were growing up. He said, in God's, in God's, there's a place in heaven where you have shelves full of body parts. You could just go there and pick it. You need faith to unlock the heavens to be able to bring body parts to the earth. Now, what do we use faith for? You see, until we understand, understanding is key to moving in the realms of the spirit. Uh, talking about unlocking the heavens, it talks about moving in the realms of the spirit. That's the highest point. Now, what do we need to do that? We need faith that works with knowledge. Or knowledge that comes, the faith that comes by knowledge. I have told you that there is faith that comes, that works with love. Faith that works with love. Faith that works with giving. Faith that works with forgiveness. There are different ways you can, you know, you can't say you have faith and not have the other, you know, things that, you have to operate faith. Faith, faith is not a docile, dormant thing that you put on a shelf. You have to pick it up and operate it. Amen. You have to wear it like an armor. At some point, you know, it's as if we put it down, that we carry it and wear it and say, look, I'm going to operate faith now. Praise the Lord. Okay, so what do we use faith for? In Hebrews 11, you will find that many people unlock their heavens. You know, we operate faith to get by in life. The Bible says the just shall do what? Live by faith. We operate faith to get by in life. Now, in um, Ma Hebrews 11, we'll go through it quickly. Verse 1, it says, Now, we were told when we were growing up that a verb is an action word. Is that correct? Please ask, Mars. A, a verb is an action word, right? Later, we now discover that the better thing to actually say is that a verb is, is a word used for doing, a word used for doing things. That's so interesting. <laughs> so you'll correct me after the service if I'm wrong. Faith, faith, uh, sorry, verb are words used for doing things. Right? I think that's more mature. So you use verb to do things. So every time you see a doing word, you, you know it's a verb. Faith is like that. So in Hebrews 1, I want us to note all the doing words in the book of Hebrews. Note it. Verse 1 says, for by it, by faith, by faith, right? By faith. For by it, not by verbal, don't misconnect it. By faith, not by verb. Okay. So by it, the elders obtained a good report. So we need faith to obtain. Faith is needed to operate. How, to, how do you operate faith? How do you use faith? You use it to obtain. Faith is required to operate, to obtain. For by it, the elders obtained. What do you need to obtain from God? What do you need to obtain? If you operate faith, you'll be able to obtain. Verse 2 says, through faith, we understand. Listen to me. We need faith to understand. We need faith to understand. Understanding is key. There's something called spiritual understanding. Being enlightened. So, we need faith to understand. By faith, they understood. In the days of old. Apostle Paul is writing to the Hebrews here. By faith, they understood. By faith, they obtained. In verse 3, what does it say? By faith, Abel offered. By faith, we offer. There is an offering that has to be done by faith. 
by faith, we offer, we use faith to do things. We use faith to solve problems, just like you use different tools to solve problems. So when there are problems, if there's no anointing, you can still operate. Hello? <laughs> you know, in this generation, everything is just about anointing. So when there's no anointing, when you are not feeling the goose pimples, you just feel nothing is happening. Hallelujah. But when there's no anointing, when you don't feel it, you operate faith. Just like you don't, just because you don't, know, you don't feel like driving, doesn't mean you cannot drive. There are days, you know, if I, I speed a lot, you know, when I'm driving, you know, and I'm traveling, and I don't feel like running some small, small cars are just passing me. Say, look, if it's not in my body, even if I pursue them, I can't catch them. Because it's not in my body to run. But the day is in my body to run. Hey! I will knock down. What they call knock down. You know, when you put the throttle down, the engine jumps. <laughs> At such times, I don't look at my, back, uh, my side mirror. I look forward. There's nobody that can... You, you look at side mirror when you want to branch. You look at side mirror when somebody's coming behind you. There's no need to look at side mirror when you are running above, uh, beyond everybody. So, so, you don't need to feel like it to get things done. When things are not moving, operate faith. Go into Hebrews and say, how did they do it? Through faith, we understand. By faith, Abel offered. I'm just going to read the part that concerns us because of time. Verse 4 says, by faith, Enoch was translated. Hey, so it took faith for Enoch to be translated. It didn't just happen. Enoch knew there had to be a heaven for him to go. Enoch knew there had to be a God for him to meet. And all of that, by faith, Enoch was tra translated. Verse 5 says, by faith, Noah, being one of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear. So it takes faith to fear God, though. If you are not a man of faith, you can't fear God. You must believe that there is hell. And there's a God who we cast into hell and nobody can query him. So you need faith to operate. Amen. You know, fear. You need faith to operate fear. Without faith, you, can, you can't operate fear of God. Verse 6 says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, which you should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. See, faith helps us to obey. When you obey God, you are operating faith. When you offer sacrifices to God, you are operating faith. Faith is meant to solve problems. Faith is for doing things. The words you find there that are verb, they are the ones that, you know, pro, you know project faith. Okay, verse 6 says, By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. As in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles. By faith, he sojourned. By faith, he sojourned. By faith, he sojourned. Amen. Verse 7 says, through faith also, Sarah herself received. Amen. Strength. We need faith to receive. The word I need you to look at there is receive. I wish we could highlight it, you know, you know, for us. The words I could have, you know, on my own study, I highlighted all the words I wanted to see. You can do that in your Bible. You can do that on your iPad. Highlight those words. By faith, Sarah received. By faith, Sarah received. Okay. Okay. By faith... Uh, which verse now? Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered. You see? Offer again. Verse 9 says, by faith, Isaac blessed. You see? We blessed by faith. You see? People do stuff for me. Somebody washed my car this morning, and I said it deliberately. And as I always do, I say it deliberately. I say, I bless you in Jesus' name. And that's, that's faith. I, I'm not blessing him because I want, I, I'm not giving him the higher form of thanks. I say, I thank you. Instead of saying thank you, I say I bless you. No, I do it deliberately. I do it because I want the person to be blessed. And there's no way the person will not be blessed. We operate it by faith. We know that when we say it, the person will be blessed. We don't know how the person will be blessed. But that's not supposed to be our business. We have angels working with us that make them to happen. Okay, okay, by faith. Um, Isaac blessed Jacob. Verse 10. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention. <laughs> Can you see that? Made mention. Faith talk. I got us through faith talk today. There were actually 50 prayer points we prayed in that faith talk this morning. When you repeated after me, there were 50. I wrote them down. You know, there were 50 exactly. That's faith talk. You know, by faith. By faith, you know, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel that will yet happen. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid. You see, people hid by faith. They dodged by faith. Jesus ran away by faith. He escaped by faith because he knew by faith that his time was not yet. Oh, one disease is on your body. You say, oh, this disease has to kill me this time. 
I'm sure this disease will kill me if you people don't pray. You ought to know that it's not your time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, by faith, verse 12, Moses, when he was come to years, refused. You see, you need faith to refuse to do the wrong things. You need a lot of faith. You operate faith. That's how to operate faith. This is how to use faith. We refuse. You know, I was reading Hebrews 11 one day and I said, come on, all these people are just using faith to do all sorts of things. I started noticing all the things that they did with faith. And I said, wow. So we can, you know, be in hunger by faith. We can escape by faith. You know, having faith in God that he will yet comfort for you. Amen. You can endure hardship by faith. Is it hardship? No, it's wrong. Hardness. The Bible calls it hardness, not hardship. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I think there's a difference. Amen. Okay. Look at it. You see, we already said it here. Chosen, verse 13. Chosen rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin. For it is chosen to suffer. You see, you need faith to choose to suffer. Look, if you don't have faith, hey, you can't enjoy it. You can't enjoy it. Amen. You need faith. You see, the three Hebrew children, they operated this kind of faith. They chose to suffer in the fire. Amen. In the fire. They chose to suffer in the fire. And they went in by faith. You say, oh, you are a foolish person. You better just, you know, you know, succumb. Just do it once. God understands. No way. Hallelujah. 14 says, by faith, he forsook. You see, we need faith to forsake certain things in life. Amen. By faith, he forsook. Verse 15 says, through faith, he kept the Passover. He kept the Passover. By faith, they passed through. You will pass through in the name of Jesus. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. You see, faith can do a whole lot for you. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. So if you want to unlock the heavens, you must have knowledge about what you are doing. You see, we can't operate faith in isolation. We can't operate faith in a vacuum. So if we want to unlock our heavens, we must know what the world is saying concerning those things. Like some people just believe that, you know, they will be poor because they came from poor parent, parenthood. They came from poor villages. They came from poor Nigeria. They came from poor, poor everything. So you just believe they will die poor. You know, that mentality, we have to deal with it to operate a higher faith. Amen. It has to be dead to you. If you don't deal with it, you remember, I was of such. My father never bought a car. My father bought, the best thing he bought was a bicycle. It was as if there was a curse on him. When he had all the opportunities to buy a car, you know what he said one, at one time? You know, he wasn't educated. He said, they told me cars always give problems. Hey, but how did you come to Lagos? Praise the Lord. At least the car brought, a car brought you to Lagos. So I grew up with the mentality that, you know, Satan actually came one and he told me, he said, look, you are not going to buy a car in your life. I said, wow, that's true because my father never bought. I believed him. Honestly, I believed him. And I was born again. And so I had my, I had my, one of my uncles say to me, he said, I will never learn how to drive with another man's car. I will learn with my car. When he said that thing, that thing doesn't leave, it didn't leave my soul. The thing stayed there. And so me too, I started saying the same thing. I said, me too. I will never learn how to drive with another man's car. It has to be my own car. Because I believed what, I, I, didn't, I didn't quite believe what he was saying, but I just felt, let me talk like him. You know, maybe if I talk like him, I will end up like him, you know. So I talked like him. And then the devil came. He said, you, are you working in Slumberger? He is working in Slumberger. You, are you working in Slumberger? I believe the devil. I said, it's true. He works in Slumberger. I don't work in Slumberger. But when I knew better, I changed my mindset. I changed my approach. I changed my walk. Hallelujah. And then my talk changed. And then I, I continued to confess it. I said, I'm going to learn with my own car. I will not learn with another man's car. I remember when we were in VI church, Pastor Fibia would say, Tony, you know I don't like driving. Stay key. You can't drive. You would have been driving my car all over town. I can't drive. I said, Pastor, I'm not taking your key. I'm not learning how to drive. I'm going to learn with my own car. And that's where I ended up. You see, it's history today. But I ended up where I wanted to end up. I ended up learning with my own car that I bought with my own money. 
and not another man's car. Praise the Lord. You see, we are where we are today because of what we said yesterday. We are where we are today. I'm repeating it because of what we said yesterday. Amen. Okay, I'm running. Okay, I still have a little time. Praise the Lord. So we need to operate to unlock of our, our heavens. You see, God placed us here on earth not to look like chicken, look, look up like chicken every time. You know how chicken looks up? Chicks, rather. How chicks look up? They just keep opening their mouth and looking up. No! Amen! Some other people want to look up to us. We are here to distribute. Praise the Lord! You see, this kind of esoteric talk, this kind of high-sounding talk, you see, you have been talking negatives before. It never brought you too far. It, got, it never got you too far. Why don't you change it and say, I have fight to get you? Because I just gave you one example now. How I talked about buying my own car and learning with my own car. And I ended up learning with my own car. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you still here? So for you to unlock your heaven, you see, it's not anything complicated. You see, we complicate things too much. You know, you thought I would come here and come and give you some high special teaching about, you know, some, some mysteries. Nothing like that. Simplicity. Faith is a very simple thing. Amen. Praise the Lord. And people are reigning in it. Now, I, I, I just share this testimony with you. Some of you may have heard me say it. I have a younger sister. Now, some of you, she used to be a member of this church until she got married and, you know, and we left and all that. They left and all that. Now, she had a son. She had a son. And at this time that I'm talking about, this son was about six, seven years old. It was difficult for her to conceive. Well, I didn't know because she didn't share it with me. But one day she calls me and says, I'm dying now. If I die, take my son. And I'm like, what nonsense are you telling me? He said, I have had two miscarriages. I'm right now in the hospital and I'm bleeding. My husband is at work. My son, we don't have a house help. And my son is right now on the street playing. They called me to say my son is playing on the street. And I said, I was lost. I can you know, you could have just heard, I could have just heard that my sister died. And then I'm like, and people will be asking me, didn't you know she was ill? I would say, I didn't know anything. And to cut a long story short, I asked her what had been happening. And she told me that every time she, take, she, she took in, every time she took in, she would have a dream at the dot of the third month, a day before the third month. And a woman would appear to her and tell her, you are having a baby without my permission. I will not let you have that baby without my permission. And then the next day, she will miscarry. I said, how long did this, how, how, how many times did this happen? She told me twice. I said, wow. I said, and you didn't tell me? So I told her, I said, okay, go back and get, you know what I told her? I said, go back and get pregnant. And when you do, because you are now experienced, you should by now be four times experienced three or four times experienced in it. So you shouldn't have to wait long to know that you have taken it. So just let me know that you have taken it from the moment you know. And so she did. I asked her, is he at the dot of three months? She said, yes. I said, okay, fine. So when she took in, she told me we started praying. And we started praying. And then at the dot of three months, it went by like nobody's business. The third month just simply went by. Nothing happened. The woman didn't come to her in her vision. She continued to be present. Now the fourth month, the fifth month, and I think it was the sixth month I visited her. And when I got there, something just descended on me like a clock, the prophetic clock. Boy. And I, I went to the husband, and I said to the husband, I think we ought to kill somebody. I want to pray a prayer that we kill somebody, either in your family or my family. I'm sorry, this is how I pray sometimes. I say, because what is troubling your wife, my sister, is either from your family or my family. And so, if you don't mind crying, me, I'm ready to cry. I, you know, it's easy to cry. I mean, there's no problem with that. But you, are you ready to cry? He said, I don't care. Go ahead, pastor, and pray. I said, okay, let's go inside. We went inside, we heard hands, we prayed. I said, Father, let this person pay with her blood. This woman that keeps appearing to her, let her pay with her blood. So I took the baby, I gave it to her, I said, you have it already. Now, I did, I, I, that was six months, so we went home. 
In the morning, she, it was her call that I received first that day. She called me. She said, that woman came home. I said, tell me more. She said, that woman came last night after you prayed and took me to a judge in my vision and took me before this big throne. And I was alone with her and facing the judge. And the judge started interrogating us. What has this small girl done to you that you want to kill her? The judge said, the woman said, I have told her that if I don't give her permission, she can't have another baby. She can't have another baby. The woman, the judge said, why don't you know he's, she's losing blood? The woman said, I don't care. So after the judgment, which was really no judgment, this God is awesome. She stu they stood up. The woman that brought her to the judge stood up and was leaving. And then the judge called her to her. Remember the prayer I said? That she would pay with her own blood. He called her to her and said, Oh, do you want to pay with your own blood? The woman said, I don't care. Wow. So when she told me that, I said, The victory has been given to you. Well, when it was time to have the baby, about a month before then, uh, 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 well, two weeks before then, you know, they say two weeks before or two weeks after. She went to the doctor, they checked her, the usual weekly at Antinata, and the doctor said, your time is still far away. Maybe another two weeks. Don't bother, go back home. She gets home, she calls me, and she says, I don't understand how I'm feeling. I said, well, I've never gone for labor room, to labor room before. I have somebody in the house who has been to labor room, so I gave my wife the phone. And she spoke with my wife. My wife said, can you call your pastor wherever he is? Can you call anybody around? Begin to pack your things and go back to that same hospital. She said, I bet they just told me, they just told me that I won't deliver until the next two weeks. To cut another long story short, they ran to look for a midwife. This is around Ayobo. Look for a midwife. They got this midwife. The midwife came, checked her in one of the rooms. The room I actually sleep when I visit them and pass the night. You know, I'm saying all this so you know I'm talking about real life story. You know, the midwife checks her and says, um, you need to stand up. I mean, go do what she, she was actually cooking up, up on a soup. I still remember. These are definitely things I have said over and over again before. You know, and so as the midwife was leaving, the head of the baby was out. She delivered right there. Before the witches and wizards went to gather, she had delivered. Before the daughters knew it, she had delivered. That's the kind of God that we serve. Praise the Lord. You see, we need to understand that we have authority that is operatable. Praise the Lord. We have to operate them. Now, that's not really the end of the story. Is it because after then, the devil came with 10,000 more demons to trouble her. One day she calls me. Is it because a miracle has been done in your life? You relax. When did, you see, Jesus told us already that the devil is going to check back, right? He would always check back. You know, after that, the devil got really crazy. One day she calls me again. You know, she has a way, you know, she has a way of just calling me and then something will just jump inside, jump inside of me. She said, my son is behaving, I don't know, I don't want to call him a dog, but he's behaving like a dog. And I'm like, what nonsense are you telling me? How can you tell me your son is behaving like a dog? I said, please go call your pastor. I need to hear from your pastor. And the pastor comes, and the pastor picks the phone and said, the way this guy is behaving, I don't understand, though. I said, you too. You too. You are confirming that this boy is behaving funny. I said, okay, pack your things. Come to my house. So they started coming to Suleri. And while in the bus, calls just, come, just kept coming. People in the bus, I kept hearing their noise. Take care of this child. She was behaving funny. And all I told her, I said, you just bring that boy to me. I like to see somebody that looks, a human being that looks like a dog. I want to see how a human being behaves like a dog. Bring that boy to me. And I, what I planned to do was put the boy right on the seat that I usually sit, the corner where I usually sit. That's all I planned to do. I didn't plan to pray about it. I didn't plan to bind anything. That's all I had in mind. So they came. You know, you needed to see how they came. Like, you know, refugees. And then they came with one Ghana must go bag to live with me. And I don't have a lot of space. And then they brought the boy. I said, where is the dog? Where is the dog? And you guess what? 
He didn't even behave funny. He didn't even need to sit on my seat. It was not necessary. They lived with us for like two weeks. Praise the Lord. They lived with us for like two weeks. And you know what? That's not the end of the story. And I'm going to end after this third one. One day, and I'm, I'm in my house again, a call comes from them. And all this happened about three, four years ago. And it was one year of hair. The baby was still sucking. I mean, they lived it all. I remember very well that the baby was still sucking. One day again, I get a call from the husband. He said, your sister was sleeping, woke up from the sleep and ran out of the door. She has gone into the bush. We are looking for her. I'm talking about what happened to me and, this, and in this Lagos. And this is 12 midnight. And I've spent all my airtime and I, I'm at my neighbor's door knocking. Who says airtime? Say, please, can you give me? I need airtime. This was past 12. And she gives me airtime. I burn it up again. And then I'm asking, is your pastor not there? Look for your pastor. He said, all the brethren are searching for her. She just woke up and ran into the bush. Left her baby. Who was this sucking? So, I, as God will have it, to end this story, I went to their house. And I did three days drive fast. And I said, Father, I put a stop to all of this. Finally. I put a stop to all of this. You see, when you meet challenges, you meet challenges how it met you. Now, how mercy dribble, neither did they take my be so. How mercy they dribble, neither did they take my And if you know your football very well, I don't follow football, you know, but I, I watch players for what they are good at. I look at Cristiano Ronaldo, I know what he's good at. I look at Messi, Messi is almost useless without his left leg. So if you know what you're doing, stay on his left, the left side of his leg. That's how you fight. You fight how the battle comes. But don't forget, you don't have to feel the anointing. To unlock your heavens, you have to operate your faith. Everybody in Hebrews 11 conquered one way or the other. Whether running, whether standing, whether sleeping, whether jumping, whether praying, whether eating. They conquered by faith. They had good report. Let's rise up, please. They had good report. So you need faith to unlock your heavens. Don't agree. That, you see, everything has been given to us. I read it. With respect to life and godliness, everything has been given to us. To you all be all the glory. To you, Savior, be all the honor. Savior, be all the glory and adoration forevermore. To you all, be all the glory. To you, Savior, be all the honor. My master, be all the glory. And adoration forevermore. And adoration forevermore, Savior. And adoration forevermore. And adoration forevermore. 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 Forevermore, forevermore, forevermore. Say with me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I refuse to be intimidated. I know whom I am. I know whose I am. I know what I am. I know where I am in Christ Jesus. I have faith to do stuff. I have faith to solve problems. I have faith to live by, to live life, to live life in the name of Jesus. Because all things that pertain to life and godliness have been given to me. 
begin to claim, begin to appreciate. it. What is that heaven that is shut over you? What is that heaven that is shut over you? With faith, you can unlock it. Faith that comes by knowledge. You need to develop your faith in finances. You need to develop your faith in health. You need to develop your faith in divine healing. Divine health. Not just divine healing, but divine health. Say, so, Father, help me to develop my faith. I have faith. I have faith. Help my own belief, oh God. Help my own belief. Help my own belief. Help my own belief. Repozo kobo shantali gebosh. Rema li gebo son toli gebosh. Le kebo so kobo shantali gebosh. Le kebo son toli gebo shantalia. Help my own belief. I still believe we can do better than that. Let's go ahead and pray to him this morning. Let's go ahead and pray to him this morning. Let's the disciples say, Oh Lord, increase our faith. Oh Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. The, 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 the situation that we are confronted in lives, in ministry, in our nation, Nigeria, is only answerable to faith. It's only faith that can change this situation.